Hello, it's Scott Manley here with uh, another one of these scientific videos or, well, fact-based videos, I guess, in this case. It's not so much science because it's about the names of stars. Now, a couple of people asked me in the last week about naming stars for friends and things like that. And, well, let's just talk about how stars get named. You know, if you look at the night sky, there's a bunch of stars that people have common names for. Places like Sirius and... Uh, Betelgeuse, Rigel, Aldebaran, all those names have come from ancient times. Now Sirius is a Greek a Latin name essentially and most of the constellations come from classical mythology. They have uh, Greek and, and Latin names or Roman names but uh, actually most of the individual stars have names that come from uh, Arabic. You see in about the second century AD Claudius Ptolemy wrote the definitive work of astronomy of this era and in it among other things, he identified over a thousand stars and he associated them with their constellations, right? So, uh, for example, he would say this star is the sword of the hunter and uh, that would be translated into Arabic. Uh, now, uh, one star in particular was identified as the armpit of a great figure in the sky and so that was translated as the armpit. Uh, which was then ultimately uh, retranslated from the Arabic back into Latin and ultimately English. And that star is called Betelgeuse, so Betelgeuse is named after an armpit. Um, so yeah, those Arabic names essentially are the ones we tend to use for, for almost every star that we, we have names for. Now, there are a number of stars that have been named since then. They've been named uh, by after astronomers who did, you know, identified interesting things. An obvious one is Barnard star. Now, E.E. E. Barnard, he identified this red star that wasn't visible in the night sky, a faint red star that had a proper motion. That meant an angular motion over the sky, which was larger and faster than any other star, which meant it was actually really nearby and whizzing past at quite a great speed. So that's now called Barnard star. He identified that. Um, other stars are named after astronomers but with a number and that's because it comes from their catalogue. Famous one being Wolf 359 which uh, was named after, well is named as the 359th star in Max Wolf's star catalogue. Most stars in the sky generally get names based upon their catalogue number in some large catalogue and the catalogues are getting pretty large these days. Uh, You'll often see stars that are HD, you know, 1157 or something. That's Henry Draper is, a, is another great example. Now, it's very rare to get a star named after a person anymore. The last time it happened was 2003. It was uh, the tea, tea Garden, I think, star. He's a Dutch astronomer and he identified a star that had been photographed for, you know, sent for ages, you know, for <laughs> decades. And it just happened that it was really faint and nearby. This is a... You know, this is a common thing. It's not the person that discovers the star, but it discovers the fact that there's something really cool about this star. Uh, there's another star in the 60s that was named for an astronomer who I've completely forgotten the name of, but it has, you know, strong helium lines. Anyway, point is, these names are accepted by the astronomical community, and specifically the International Astronomical Union. Uh, the IAU are the people that decide what stars get named, not the International Star Registry or StarNaming.com or anything like that. Now, these uh, commercial services where you pay a small fee and you get to name a star and you get a little certificate and maybe a plaque and, I don't know, maybe you get something on a website, a book, but the point is, uh, that's what you're getting. You're getting a book with your name in it and that book itself is copyrighted and therefore you'll see uh, the specific language says your name will be entered into the register of stars which will itself be registered with the Library of Congress so your name is copyrighted and therefore it's copyrighted in the same way as you know say Tatooine which is a fictional name for a fictional place if you uh, name yourself if you name a star using these services you're getting a fictional name for a real place uh, now, if you think that that's a bit unfair and that you think the IAU should let people name stars, well, um, you know, you can try and change your mind, or you could just create your own name for whatever star. It will have the same level of legal protection as, you know, star registry people. Uh, it's up to you. Anyway, uh, that's about star names. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.